We'll get the listeners involved in a little while. But we yeah. have no real prizes to give away yet. I know. We can't do little contests until we have prizes. And where are we at with the World Series tickets? we got to do the Puke Fest. Puke Fest 2 coming to the Opie and Anthony show. XM have to signed, do it. XM signed the big deal. They signed a huge Major deal League with Major baseball. League Baseball. We just need one pair of tickets to the World Series, and we'll give you guys some really, really good radio. Should be able to get some World Series tickets, right? I'm hoping. Okay. So. How about if we can't get World Series tickets, though? Maybe mm-hmm. uh, a motel room, and you get to watch the game with Open Ant in the motel room. <laughs> Beverages and popcorn yeah, provided? Sure. On what planet does that work? It's fun. You guys will love that. You get to laugh. No, you know Hang what? out. Yeah. Happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the last job. God damn it. Now we're going to waste ten more minutes. What's the matter, Ope? At our last job. Um, oh, when we first when got no there. one really knew who we were, we were still doing the the stupid radio crap. I remember this. We finally put an end to that when we got some kind of audience behind us. But uh, they actually came to Anthony and I and said, "Hey, we got a great idea for a promotion. We want to give away a chance." Ben's in here because it was he'll laugh at this too. Uh, we want to give a a, a a chance for a listener to watch the Super Bowl with Opie and Anthony. Yeah. Hello? That was the big yeah. prize. That was Roger, our, uh, our promotions guy who knew nothing, putting that one together. We'll have you guys show up at the house with a big screen television yeah, yeah, yeah. set, and you can sit there with the the guy and his family and watch the Super Bowl. Uh, what? We have to sit in a house with people we don't know instead of hanging out with our own, you know, family and friends. And we had only been doing the show for like. I don't know. It wasn't very long. It was a few months. And, and, you know, the guy that entered the contest knows the show. But everyone else, his whole family and everything, could they didn't care have a clue less. who we were. They we don't care. care less. Imagine just knocking uh. knocking on someone's door during the Super Bowl and saying, hey, mind if I hang out with you? And then sitting there, you don't know anybody and they don't know you. And you're sitting there we're supposed to watch the Super Bowl. I felt like I knew everyone there, though. You had the You had the guy with his... Young, hot girlfriend. Oh, it was everyone yeah. you see everywhere else. At every other party, you right. just didn't know these people. They just looked a little different, and their names were different. You had the aunt that thinks she's a little wild. She's, she's crazy. A little wild. She gets a few in her, and oh, oh, oh she's out. crazy. Get out of her way. <laughs> she thinks she's uh, funnier than she really is. Oh, and, yeah. And she's wild, and if the situation was right, you'd be banging her, you know. Oh, she'll put the fl- elbow in, in your ribs. The is happening, and then you got the other lady that's proud of her stupid dish that she brought to the Super Bowl party. I, I was slaving over the, 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 the stove all morning. Oh, look, to make these Marge Swedish brought her meatballs. lasagna. <laughs> right. Marge brought her. you got to taste this because it's just fantastic. Yeah. No, I don't have to taste it. It tastes like placenta with a meatball in it. <laughs> so Anthony and I have to show up in this house somewhere on Long Island. Hey, we're here for the Super Bowl. You're, here's your grand prize. Here's your big screen television, which, you know, is a cool oh, prize and all. Oh, but... lucky you. You get to hang out with Ant and I for the Super Bowl. We sat on the couch. We didn't even, Ant and I didn't even talk to each other. He sat on one side of the couch. I, sat I drank the all their beer. They were so excited. They've set up, like, video cameras and just, like, had him in the corner to, to videotape the whole time we were there. God, it that was sucked. awful. I wish someone out there was at that party and could get those tapes. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Someone out there, I'm sure, knows that you guys went on to become huge, thank you, huge stars. I'm sure there's a videotape of us sitting there, bored shitless. <laughs> it was the worst, man. We had to show up. We even had to bring the beer and soda. Remember, we're it, hauling it in. Oh, it was a big presentation. Because, we were because, supposed to, like, go, hey, we're here with the beer usually, and the TV. Yeah, usually when you ha- do a radio oh. promotion, you get, like, a support staff that comes with well, you and, and sets it, up everything. I know Ben, because Ben, it was Ben's job at the time. And, uh... No, there was no support staff. They just give us the address and go, show up before the game starts. And we're like, oh. Oh, and by the way, can you bring the soda and the beer? Yeah. It was awful. Absolutely awful. This is a great promotion. And this brilliant idea was the morning show at the time, Mason and Kalinske. R- Roger set it up. Earl and I had to go way out to Jersey and then meet you guys in Long Island. By the time we got there, the game was over. It was retarded planning. And Roger, one of Roger's brilliant brilliant promotions. And then he ended up stealing everything from the station. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Him and Eddie. Yeah, he, you know, the only reason he was had the job was because his uh, uh, father-in-law was a bigwig in the company. So yeah. he had to take care of this, like, useless person. He was Mel's best friend. Yeah, sure. So so you guys are pretty much saying that before I kind of came along, you guys had to do a lot of shit work. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. not really, pal. Let's relax. Let's calm down a little bit. I'm saying you had to go out and do that. That's that's You kind of paved the way and saved me the trouble. We didn't. 
Uh, I appreciate that. I guess in a way. Update on the uh, Oompa Loompa shirt that's available on eBay. The autographed Oompa Loompa shirt is now up to $187.50. Is this a real bid? It seems to be. It's kind of hard to do fake bids, right? You it? can, but it kind of screws up your... You can welch on an eBay auction. That's yeah. unfortunate, but yeah, it's possible. But it kind of screws up, up your... It's up to 201 uh, right now. It's up to 201. The intern is jumping up and down. He, he, You are a smart kid, Danny. Yeah, he gets 10% what he's doing. 203.51. 203, all right. Um, we have to go to the phones and talk about... Uh, yeah, remember this one, Anthony? Brian from Syracuse. Yes, Brian. Yeah, I just wanted to know if you guys served uh, a giant Pop-Tart to eat instead of popcorn and wings. Oh, and this shit. son of a bitch that would do... Roger. Anthony and I came from Boston where we were like, um, we were huge. I mean, I, I, we were doing well. No, we were really big in the Boston radio market. And then uh, we got, you know, we told the, we told uh, all of Boston that the mayor died in a fiery car accident on April Fool's. And we got fired, okay? So then we have to, like, we 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 eat it so many times in our career. It's not even funny. Mm. Once again, we're in the underdog position, and, and we're in the fight of our lives again. But we came to New York. Gunfire wailing over my head. We came, we came to New York and... Uh, yeah, we had to start over. No one cared. You know, we were huge in Boston, but for New York, it's like, whatever, dudes. We don't know who you are down here. So we had to, like, you know, build it up again like we're doing here with the XM Satellite. And they uh, they hired this promotion guy. Like, don't worry, man. Don't worry. This guy, if, you know, whatever you need, he'll he'll get within yeah. a day. Yeah. You, you need know? a Humvee. Yeah. I remember them saying, yeah. if you need a, two Humvees, he'll have them there the next day. He'll fucking get them right for you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, he's oh. he's giving us this uh, big pitch in his office, like, look, man, I'm your guy. I'm going to make you guys big again. I'll give you the promotional staff you need to, you know, to get known here in New York. He was awful. And then he would come to us uh, every other day with these stupid radio stupid promotion promotions ideas that Anthony and I just don't do. You the, know the show is the about, Super Bowl about thing hanging out and through. stuff. Let's be honest. Yeah, but we're guilty as charged, as they would say. Yeah. But, but there were so many other ideas like, are you insane? Yeah. You know what the show's about, and hanging out and having a good time, and realism and stuff like that. Not uh, anti-radio bits. You know what I mean? And uh, he comes to, and approaches us one day and goes, and he was happy and skipping into the uh, into the studio to tell us this because he thought we would just think it was the greatest thing ever. He says, uh, "Guys, guess what? I got a remote for you. I mean, like a remote." All right, you go out of the studio and set up camp somewhere. Yeah. Usually remotes that we've done are pretty cool. Uh, we've done some from uh, concerts and stuff backstage. Uh, so they're pretty cool, you know, depending on where they are. So we thought he had a, a remote for us. Like OzFest, we went to that. We had a great time. Uh, guys, I have a remote for you. Oh, yeah, uh, where, Roger? Where? Uh, well, in Madison Square Garden, I'm thinking Madison Square Garden. Yeah, okay, this is this. cool. Okay, right. You know, the garden, they put on some good shows there. I'm with you so far. Madison okay, good, Square good. Garden yeah, is yeah. hosting uh -huh. Uh -huh. the world's largest Pop-Tart. <laughs> and I got you guys where you can set up right next to it. And broadcast live. And broadcast live from the world's largest Pop-Tart at Madison Square Garden. We looked at it. I started laughing because I thought it had to be a joke. And I was waiting for the punchline and everything. And yeah, no, no. He actually was setting us up where we would have have our broadcast next to a a giant toaster pastry. <laughs> what the? What are we gonna? What, how he thought this would enhance our program? Although, you I imagine, must say, we have been talking about it for quite a while now. Could you imagine the radio show though? Oh, you know, give us something to work with here. Hey, we're here uh, in front of the largest. Pop tart and uh, wow, it's pretty large, Anthony. Ob, I cannot wait until uh, uh, two hours. We're counting down. We're going to cut into this thing and see if it is apple or blueberry. <laughs> That's uh, right. We don't know yet. We'll be taking your call so you can guess, and whoever guesses correctly what the toaster pastry filling is. And after this break, we'll be talking to the chef. Oh, the guy that actually cooked. The giant pop. That's part. right. It's an exclusive interview with the chef, Anthony. I hope maybe he'll give us the ingredients to the frosting that goes on. Boy, top we of can it. only hope. Hey, where where are they going to get a toaster to put this thing in? <laughs> 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 and for all you listeners stuck in traffic because you're trying to get down to the world's largest yeah. pop tart, don't you worry. It's going to be here a while. It'll and be so here a while, we. and we'll be cutting little pieces off for everybody, so you'll be able to try the world's largest pop tart. This thing is huge, Opie. Just look at the size of it. I I think that's what he was expecting, that we would be happy. The thought that when he walked into the studio with this, he was expecting us to be like, wow, 
and just pat him on the back and shake his hand and go, job well done. Giant Pop-Tart, great job. And then he came up with the wow window clings. We we sat down with him and our retarded program director, <laughs> Gary. The ice cream man. The ice cream PD who would come in licking an ice cream cone as we're pulling our hair out of our head because of multiple problems. And he would just come skipping in. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, go away. Die. And um, Roger. I liked our program director, Gary, though. He, he taught me all about the stock market. Yeah, well, that's about all he did. He was heavy up in the uh, stock market like everyone was back then. But, Roger, we, we sit down and, and design out these wow stickers because we want to get them out as quickly as possible. We meticulously pick a background color and a, a, a font color uh, to, so it, it best shows up at distances and, you know, v visibility. Uh, it, painstaking. It took weeks to design these stickers. We send them out. We get the boxes back, much like the scene out of Spinal Tap when they receive Smell the Glove. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we God, open up these so boxes true. expecting to see the sticker we designed that took weeks, weeks, maybe even months to design. And Roger peels one out. And what he's got is equivalent to a wow color form. Yeah. It's a clear color form. I remember saying to myself, oh, we're fucked. Yeah. And, and we're this like, wait. Awful. Where are the wow stickers? He goes, no, better than stickers. These are window clings. <laughs> We're like, what the, f what the, f what, what? We designed it. No, these people don't have to worry about messing up their bumpers with bumper stickers. You could put these right on your window. Yeah, but what about like the not, people that? Well, I, I was gonna say, and it's not like uh, tinted windows were were popular. <laughs> tinted windows, in the late nineties. The backs of tractor trailers, <laughs> right. signposts, right. walls, right. anywhere else you see wow stickers around, which is everywhere, uh, that you will not see them because it's on the window cling. Unbelievable boxes upon boxes, boxes upon boxes of these useless window clings that, by the way, matched nothing in font or color to the sticker that we came up with. Yeah, and but he was a genius. He knew better. I could see him at the sticker place having our design, everything we wanted, going up to the counter at the sticker place and going, "Here's what I want." I and then looking up and seeing a window cling and going, "Hmm, I have a better idea. I'm gonna get window clings." And taking the initiative, you know, all by himself, making the decision. What about the time he wanted us to marry a couple on Valentine's Day in a limo? In a limo. So Anthony and I would broadcast live from a limo. Right. As a, a couple was getting married in the limo on their yeah. way down Atlantic City, I think, where the honeymoon would be. Very and good. We you remember this. And we would broadcast the whole thing. What we want you to do is pick a couple to, w to win, a couple that's going to be married. They could call in. And we will pick a winner, and the winner gets to get married in the limo with you two presiding over the wedding. And you could broadcast it live from inside the limo. Ugh. You worthless piece of crap. And then people wonder why we get stupid and do all these crazy things to get attention. Yeah, yeah, and they wonder why we do the voyeur bus, and we did, uh, you know, the... Uh, the C-word uh, on TV. And 55-gallon drum challenge, and all, all the fun stuff that people want to hear, because, because the station itself was presenting us through people like Roger with this crap drivel that you wouldn't hear on a morning zoo show. A Pop-Tart indeed. Yes, Ben? He, he then also, we were giving away satellite dishes, and he set it up so he won one as well as our program director. Yeah, that, that was, was another funny. scandal. <laughs> that was another scandal. And then when we uh, knew that the radio station was completely falling apart, all this legendary rock memorabilia that was hanging on the walls. Oh, Led Zeppelin gold records from the Beatles. Led Zeppelin lithographs that uh -huh. were signed by all the, everybody, including Bonham before he died. Back the car up to any W. We, we, don't, we don't know for sure. But it's, allegedly, it seems like, um, it, yeah, it seems like he took a lot of that stuff. Yeah, stuff signed by Kurt Cobain just hanging up on the walls. I everything, could use this. Everything just just disappeared. The best, everything. The best was allegedly there was a huge box of stuff. He came in one morning on one of his last days, and he had we had Eddie who was you know Eddie yeah. was handicapped. Handy, had, handy capable. Though. Yes. He was handy capable. Also distributed our mail, which was a whole other thing. They had the retarded guy Dude. distribute the mail at NEW. But he had Eddie take everything down to his car. He had this huge box. And sure enough, you know, no one ever knew what happened to the gold records. Yeah, we uh, we mean, used to get mail. In, like, I'd get Ben's mail. Opie's mail would have, like, Earl's and the Radio Chicks mail. And then he would come into our office, uh, the mail guy, Eddie, and go, what's his name? 
what's his name here say? And point to the envelope. He couldn't read the names on the envelope, but they you, gave him the job of delivering the mail. You can't make this stuff up. They, no. Yeah, they had a guy. I, I mean, you know, he was very cool, but he was a little slow. A little I, slow. I can't. What, what, what's, the, what's, the mail, what's the address on this? You know, what's this name? Is this Opie? And so they gave him, you know, a little more responsibility. His job was to just take care of the garbage. He was a huge Mets fan. I still see him. He's, you know, I don't want to trash the guy. M O O N. That's Bell's Muni. But they're like, yeah, we. I think we want him delivering the mail. And it's just yeah. like every day it was. So an he adventure. deliver the mail. It was an adventure. And take out the garbage. That was his job. And sometimes the mail ended up in the garbage. Well, there was a sales guy who was like going through a divorce who had all his bills coming through the station. Was that the gay no, that sales was guy? That we, we <laughs> By the saw way, pictures online. And I was in that boat head. too. At one at one Wait, point, I was in that same boat. What, I, I, going through the divorce, I didn't have uh, an address, so I was getting some of my mail, like cell phone bills and, and stuff, lawyer sent, bills sent you know. to the station. So I had Peter's. my cell phone turned off because I don't know where it ended up. I don't know. Uh, who's, whose name is this? I, 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 put, I put it in the Carol Miller box. <laughs> it gets even better. We, when we switch formats, we get all these new mic flags. Nobody could find the mic flags. Yeah. Eddie put them in a closet, 10, 10 wins. They were missing for months. Yeah, it was in a clo- back like a, an air conditioning unit closet <laughs> up in 10, 10 wins, the news station. Oh, it was That's just, where all the new mic flags were. It was just a mess He would there. put stuff somewhere. Was, you'd be expecting something, like, oh, this person's supposed to send something to the show. And you'd be like, where is it? And then weeks later, you'd find it somewhere behind a desk or uh, in a closet. I don't know what name here. It gets even better. We were giving away TVs one time. All right. And he, Eddie was in charge of bringing the. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. Sorry. He's in charge of bringing the TVs up. And he got on the freight elevator. And the guy's the freight elevator. Like, he's like I don't care. Just take one. We lost like three yeah. TVs. Yeah. They were like, Hey, what? What do you got there? Oh, they're TVs. They come in for the station. And the guys, of course, trying to take advantage of them. They're like, uh, How many you got there? You're, hey, could I grab one? Oh yeah, take one. You take a TV. He probably thought they were going to help him bring the TVs upstairs yeah. or something. It was. Just, I, I'm just amazed we made anything of ourselves. Cause Misa, it, say you <laughs> take a TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh God, shut it, up. It was just. I'm just amazed. We had yeah. no help over there, none whatsoever. And then in that little bathroom, here's a great Muni story, great Scott Muni story. There was a, that disgusting bathroom by the yeah. studio. Someone had thrown paper towels into the toilet. <laughs> so Muni comes out and he's like, "God damn, motherfucker!" You know who did this? He goes, it's okay, Scott. I'll take care of it. Puts his bare hand into that disgusting Oh, yeah, he wouldn't care. Takes her... <laughs> he didn't like, care. Jesus Christ. He just walked away. It was hilarious. It was just an adventure over the there. The freak show over there. It really was an adventure.